My name is John Hudson and this is my wife Lisa and we have had Saluki's for 34 years. I think when we moved in here we had 17 in the house. We only breed when we want a puppy. Our main purpose in breeding is we have a desire to maintain the Saluki as it was brought here from the Arabs in its natural state. Uh, we judge at champ show level. We've got six Salukis here now, and four of them are champions. This is Glen Oak Layla, and she is four months old. And that is champion Glen Oak Kayan. He's six. We've got four more in there. There's Kazra Nima of Glen Oak. She's 14 and a half, and amazing for her age, actually. She's a cream bitch. Then there's champion Glen Oak Inky, who is a big black boy. He is 14, and the great-grandfather of this little one on my lap. Then there's his daughter, champion Kazra Tahira of Glen Oak. She's coming up for 11 years old. Then there's her daughter, champion Glen Oak Kamala, who is this little one's mum. She is six. The well, Saluki stands about the same size as a greyhound. According to the standard, they're 23 to 28 inches at the shoulder. Most of them are around about 28. Most of our females have been smaller than the males. In general, they are, but there's not much in it. They're running dogs, and therefore they have the usual attributes similar to a greyhound. They have a deep chest. The chest should come forward between the front legs. They should have a good front. They have long legs going into a fairly narrow muscular loin and then powerful back legs. That's the driving force. That what makes them run. They have a different head to a greyhound with lop ears, a long muzzle. They are the original breed. If you look at pictures of Roman and Egyptian running dogs, all these civilizations all had hunting dogs. And this is the generic hunting dog. The greyhounds are really the sprint champions. But after about 500 metres, a greyhound will think that's probably enough. And the Saluki goes on and on. They're the distance champions. They have a close coat, mostly. Some are pretty hairy, some are not. But generally they have the feathering on the ears and the tail. It also comes on the back legs and on the back of the front legs. Between the toes, for running over sand, some people say, I don't know, probably could run over sand without that. There is a smooth variety of Saluki where the long hair is not there, and it's exactly the same, except no feathering anywhere, but just a close coat. They come in almost every colour. This guy's cream. He's not white, he's cream. And this one is black and tan, or actually black and cream like a Doberman coat pattern. You get them red, that is chestnut coloured, with black shading on the ears and sometimes on the body itself. You can get darker creams going to gold. You can get lighter reds going to what we call fawn with black shading, that's another pretty colour. Then there's grizzle, characterised by a face mask which rises from the centre of the nose and goes over the eyes and a two-tone coat. Party colours? Oh yeah, party colours. You can get any sort of variety of party colours, starting with white bits. She's got white bits um, here, here. Uh, and going uh, more white will come round the neck. And then you can have it completely white with little patches. There are colours which are disapproved of because there is no evidence that the original Salukis ever came in these colours. And one of these is blue that is grey, and merle, that's not approved of. Uh, but otherwise, it's any old colour you like, really. The Saluki has been bred for, for millennia. You can see pictures of dogs which just look like Salukis in Egyptian tombs going way back, 3,000, 4,000 years. They are the generic hunting dog. The Arab tribes kept these dogs, and these dogs were bred true for centuries. 
You can see artists' pictures of people who came back from the Crusades bringing dogs like this. And so when the Brits got to Persia in the beginning of the 19th century, we find Salukis turning up at the London Zoo on display. And then finally, in the 1890s, Salukis were brought to England and continuously bred from then on. And the Salukis do come from a broad range of countries. They come from Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Israel, Egypt. And there are similar hunting dogs, of course, right across Asia. But the Saluki is the particular variety which settled down in the UK in the 20s and 30s when the British and the French and the assorted Western nations moved right in. The fall of the Ottoman Empire meant that the Brits got into the Middle East and these were the dogs they brought home with them. And in 1923 they were established as a breed. And the reason for the, the initial big range in standard height from 23 to 28 inches expresses that range of types of Saluki. Although the range is not as great now as it was, I think they've been more standardized. They're a hunting dog and they always will be a hunting dog. If you have a Saluki, it will hunt. It will hunt next door's cat. Uh, rabbit that comes into your garden and so forth. You have to watch them. There are a lot of stories that people tell about Seleucids which may well be true. And one of the stories is that the Arabs are Muslims and to the Muslim a dog is unclean. However, like all religions, they make certain adjustments for reality. And the Saluki is the noble one and is an exception in it lived in the Arab tents, lived with them, grew up with their families, and it was quite acceptable for Arabs to have a dog of this sort, whereas other dogs were unclean. The story is that the Arabs could not eat an animal that had been killed by a dog. They had to be killed in the proper way by slitting the throat and pronouncing the name of God. So the myth is that the Arabs trained their dogs to hold the prey until the owner came up and administered the coup de grace. They don't do that now. When our dogs find a rabbit in the field, they kill it. They kill it very efficiently. They are hunter killers and they're good killing machines. We don't encourage them in this and we try to maintain our fences. <laughs> we don't see any rabbits in our field, but it's impossible to keep them all out. So Lucas are supposed to be aloof, and basically this means that they're suspicious of strangers. Actually, they don't care about strangers. I think that's the better way of putting it. You're a stranger, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in you, and walk away, which is a bit annoying, because if you take them out, people say, well, can I stroke him? Well, yeah, if he agrees, <laughs> and he probably won't. And it's a shame, because little kids like stroking dogs, you know. They're not good with other breeds. I believe this is a language problem. The body language of a Saluki is quite different from the body language of your average gun dog. Gun dogs are bouncy and friendly, and a Saluki will take that as aggression. So they need to be socialized. Socialization with noises, with children, and particularly with other dogs. So if you're gonna run your dog in the park, even though it's well fenced, the dog's gotta be able to get on with other dogs. Many people who had Salukis have other breeds and we have Border Terriers. Well, usually just one at a time. When the puppies are small, the Border Terriers are a great companion. They run together and they play together. But as the Saluki gets bigger, the games tend to be Saluki games. I can catch you and you can't catch me. But when I catch you, I'll grab you by the scruff of the neck, which I wish you wouldn't. The Border Terrier is so tolerant, so easygoing and tough that she puts up with murder. But they do get to understand Border Terriers. I can't emphasize too much this socialization thing. They're great with children, but only if they get to know children. Introduce them slowly, and they're brilliant. So they're generally good, but you need to take care. They're a dog, they're a hunting dog. We have four cats with our first Saluki, and they were fine. Generally speaking, a cat's in charge in the house. Out in the garden, it has to be a little bit more wary. I think if a Saluki puppy 
is introduced to any sort of animal very young, they will get on fine. But when the Saluki is older, it will view, and it hasn't been used to other animals, it will view them as prey. Yeah. They will bark at strangers, they won't be aggressive. If they don't want to know them, they'll run away and then quieten down after a few minutes. Well, they won't be aggressive, but by golly, they look aggressive. But don't know a Saluki who's been nasty to a person. Salukis are occasionally extremely noisy. If you get strangers coming to the house, they make quite a racket. And that's not necessarily aggression, it's just excitement. They actually, they make more racket if they know the people coming now, I can't think of it. They're not great guard dogs. People have nicked all sorts of stuff from our stable and they've not noticed. So you have to come right to the door before they actually pay any attention. But they're noisy then. But within five minutes, they've settled down and you almost don't know you've got them. And if you have more than one, they do tend to howl. Yeah, they do howl. Unfortunately. They do howl. Uh, as far as we know, we, they don't make a racket. When, as, I mean, we go, they howl. And as far as we know, they settle down after that. Um, but we don't actually know, do we? No, because we're not here. And our neighbours are not close enough to make huge complaints. Uh, but we believe they settle down and keep quiet. And the rest of the time, they're, they're just like this. You, you, there's no noise at all. So look, it's OK as a single dog, but... It almost never happens. Soon as a person has one <laughs> Saluki, after a few months, they seem to feel the need to have another one. And we know very few people with only one Saluki. Yeah, that's true. If you're going to run a Saluki, it really needs a companion to run with. I mean, it will run after birds and small animals. But best of all, it has a companion to run with. So two Salukis is pretty good. Uh, Salukis are very affectionate to their owners. They're very loyal and they love their first owners deeply. It's sometimes quite difficult to rehome a Saluki because they just miss their first owner. They spend the whole time trying to get out of the garden to find their first owner. And they just never love their next owners the way they would, they would have done with their first owners. They just, had, there's, yeah. there's a bonding that goes on. Yes, my first Saluki was uh, 15 months old and she never grew to love me the way she loved her first owners. And once they came to visit when she was about six years old and I was really upset because she was so pleased to see them and she had never shown me that much affection. They don't pass on easily, they really don't. They're not all over you, but they definitely like to be with you. They hate to see the pack separated. When we just had one Saluki, if Lisa took the Saluki and I went somewhere else, she got quite distressed, you know, this is not right, we should stick together. In general, they settle near you, not on top of you. Yeah. Uh, they're also a little bit large to have on your lap. It gets on your bed and curls up really small. And you think, well, it's all right. And halfway through the night, it's right stretched out and you're practically out of the bed. I mean, it takes up an enormous amount of room. I mean, it, it, the Yankee takes up the whole of this city. <laughs> and look, yeah, she's spacing herself out. That's a two-lap Saluki already. <laughs> they are running dogs, and uh, they'd rather run than eat, generally speaking. Obviously, if they're hungry enough, they probably wouldn't. But if you call a Saluki back and it's out, it will recognise your voice, it will look towards you, yes, it's him calling me. And then it will deliberately look round the horizon to see if there's something better to do. And if there is, it will go off and do it. It is possible to train a Saluki to come back. Whether it really would if it saw a rabbit or a hare go by it is very doubtful in my mind. But they're not easy dogs to train. They are hounds, they're hunting hounds, and their job is to think on the job. And they make their own decisions. They are a dog trainer's nightmare. Uh, lots of stories of trainers who thought they could train Salukis. Well, some people get up at ridiculous hours in the morning so that they can run their Saluki on the local park. Some rent a field of a farmer. 
some are lucky enough, like we are, to have a three acre space at the back of the house. But in general, to keep a slug in, you need a six foot fence. They can jump higher than that if they're trained, but if you, as long as you stop training them to jump, they'll stay inside a six foot fence. If you haven't got pre-running, you really need a fairly sizable garden so that the saluki can scamper about a bit. And lead walking. A lot of people lead walk their salukis. An hour in the morning, an hour in the evening for a brisk walk is probably enough. And a couple of burn-ups if you've got the space every day. The rest of the time they, they do this. They, they lie about, looking decorative. Actually, we've had thick salukis and we've had intelligent salukis. Um, they, they can be very intelligent. Um, but they're not intelligent in the way a border collie is. No. Not Be people say they're thick because they're untrainable. Uh, that's not being thick, that's just expressing a, yes, they're a more preference. Like, they're really. more like a cat. Yeah. Um, independent thinkers. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like about Saluki is they are more feline. Uh, they have their own agenda uh, and when they're not uh, doing something interesting they lie down, they don't come pestering you. Some people's vision of a dog is one that immediately comes to the salute as soon as you say it and that is not a saluki. If you are like that, don't have a saluki. People do all sorts of doggy things with salukis. The most obvious thing is lure coursing. There's lure coursing events and that's great, it's, uh, it's a paper bag on a string and it runs around a course and they love it. You can take them racing. The Afghan societies run racing meetings at dog track and they love that as well. It's brilliant. They do obedience. There's a Kennel Club Good Citizens Award and we do know Saluki who have gone up to gold. It's a bit of a strain but it, it can be done. They will do agility. But not very well. Not very well, no. <laughs> and uh, I suppose all of this they don't do very well. This is a story of the guy who did obedience and the Saluki just changed its mind and went somewhere else. Yeah, very embarrassing. One of the reasons that Salukis are difficult to train is that they're not greedy. <laughs> They'd rather run than eat. And so you can bring on liver, chicken, anything. No, I don't think so. And if they're upset, they won't eat. But they can be really picky eaters. The Salukis are maintained at a fairly slender size. You will get people running after you and saying, don't you feed your dog. If they've decided they're not eating, they really do like oh, walking skeletons, you don't take them on the street. You do get fat ones who so overeat and a fat Saluki just looks dreadful. We've um, had Salukis that won't look at toys and won't play and we've had Salukis that are still playing with toys at yeah, the age of 14. They vary. Yeah. Yeah, In they general, do. If you throw a ball, they'll ignore it, but some will bring it back. Um, they some don't will. play with toys like gun dogs or terriers, no. but some do enjoy toys, particularly squeaky toys. Yeah. They're pretty easy to keep. They've got this close coat. They just need their ears brushing couple of times a week and their tails and any other long hair. They do tend to get little mats behind their ears which need attention but a couple of times a week is fine. They have dirt shedding coats on the whole. They come back and then you find you're hoovering it up because it's all left the saluki and it's all <laughs> over your kitchen. They're pretty easy but it is good to pay attention because these mats can grow and harbour all sorts of nasties. It's not a good idea to neuter a saluki. Once a saluki has been neutered, the coat will grow and grow. We have a saluki that had to be spayed for medical reasons, and we have to clip her coat about every three months, or she looks like a fluffy afghan. They do molt, but generally speaking, it's not much hair about. Um, you don't get handfuls of it. Salukis are very lucky actually. We have no known hereditary diseases. 
there have been scares. Before we knew Seleucus, there was a scare about retinal atrophy, which proved to be nothing. Then people thought maybe Seleucus got hip dysplasia, and so everybody went and had their dogs x-rayed, and that was nothing. There have been cases where a particular line of breeding has died at an early time. But, of course, dying early is one way of finishing the line. And as far as we know, there's nothing like that about. There, the Kennel Club requires no health tests for Salukis. No, no, there's none. Saluki owners tend to buy them very pretty fancy collars, but also they're quite wide because if they pull, their neck is very long and a thin collar could damage their neck. Arabs used to put fancy collars on their dogs in the olden days and that's where it came from. So look, it's a bit addictive. We never intend to be without one. They're lovely dogs, they're great companions, they look beautiful. And they're wonderful to watch running, just wonderful. People do come into Salukis who have had Afghans because they're easier to keep. And of course people do go out in Salukis and get a whip it. Uh, because they're easier to keep, and so it goes on. But we're not going to take that route. I like these dogs because of their temperament. They're like pussy cats. They've got their own mind and their own agenda, and they're not desperate to do what you're doing, only just ahead of you, like a terrier is. They're brilliant dogs, but only if you like that sort of thing. <laughs>